Michelle Gardner errors on Republic. Obviously, Nesta, it's been kind of a long week, a, a tough week for you guys. Can you kind of talk about the team's mindset coming out into this game against a very good team? Mm -hmm. Um, it's been a Coach Aguano, he worked us this week and um everything he brought, he brought a new juice, new energy. And um, I think the team really appreciated it. You know, we 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 um we reacted to it well as a team, offense, defense, special teams, all three phases. Um had a stack three good days of practice, a fourth one if you count Friday. And we just didn't capitalize on a great week of practice because that's what we truly had. And um, you know, we still believe in everything Coach Aguano said is saying, everything he's gonna come in here and say. Um the team's still intact and we still know what we got to do. And um, we still got a lot more to play for. Thanks, man. Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. Tough loss, obviously. And sorry, you got to sit here and take questions after. It just cannot be fun for you. Uh, what do you feel about your team's effort? The score got a little lopsided. Do you feel like your team slowed down or do you feel like you guys played to your capabilities? You did the best you could. Um, To speak for the whole team, I don't know if I could do that to like, dive into that film but from what I seen on the sidelines you know we kept our morale up we kept we kept fighting came into halftime made our adjustments made our corrections and you know we played a real good football team kudos to them being able to come out and you know do what they did to us so you know, uh, coming right out of the game you guys locked in arms and it seemed like there was an added level of energy just in overall stadium. Did you guys feel that? Did you feel the the support, you know, that might might have been lacking last last week? Um I, I don't know if I'd say it's lacking just to, you know, try and make it oh it was a coach Hearn problem. You know, I I'm not gonna sit here and say it like that because I feel like since I got here, this team has been a band of brothers. You know, they they woke with me and with open arms, they let me know how things go. And you know, just locking arms, I feel like that was just us showing that. Cause regardless of Whoever's in that head man seat, it's the dudes on the, in the arena who's playing, and we know we're playing for each other, and we know what we're playing for. So I don't think it, it was any different. Michael Karras, you know, sideline sports. When you look at when they adjusted, obviously playing tempo and stuff like that. Obviously, you guys, I know, worked on that in practice. But what kind of problems was it giving you, and was it tough to adjust to when Utah went up tempo? Um, I mean, when they went up tempo, it's um, we got to be able to look to sideline, get the calls, you know. Look at the backfield formations and get set. It's it's not much to it. We just got to be able to do our jobs, you know, me included. Nesta here, uh, Chris Carmen, sent the source. You mentioned three good days of practice. Um, the, the execution, not exactly where you want it to be, but do you think that it's just going to take a little bit longer for a lot of what Iguano's preaching? I think we're going to have to come back into work tomorrow. And, you know, we play a real good football team next week. That's another great opportunity to get to play in the Coliseum. So, um, I, I don't give a damn what we play, so I don't even to say that. But, you know, we play a real good football team next week. And, you know, tomorrow we got to focus on them, dive into this film, correct, make the corrections, have the coaches coaches. Coach Guano going coaches, he's going to come in and say what he had to say about this, but we play USC in a week. So that's where I'm at with it. And hey, Ashley, you guys struggled to get off the field in a number of third and longs there late in the first half and throughout the game, really. What was it about this offense that kind of kept you guys up front from getting consistent pressure and kept you guys on the field? Um... Shoot, you watched it. Maybe you could tell me. Just a few days, really, under Sean Aguano's coaching, um, and you know the execution hasn't been where you guys have wanted it in, in the first the last three games. So, do you think it's just a matter of it's going to take time for what he's preaching and what you guys are trying to do now to kind of settle in on you? Um, yeah, I think ultimately it is going to take a little time, but I mean, I think we had a great week of practice. Everybody handled the the change very well. Um, and ultimately, I think it just comes to us executing. Um, and we didn't do that today, but should we played hard. I think if you if you watch this tape, when we watch this tape, like you're going to see no quitting this. And we played hard to the end today. Isaiah, for you, um, first real opportunity to get a lot of reps out there and start. How did that feel and how do you think you performed? Uh, uh, it's a blessing, man. Um, I've been waiting my whole life for this. Felt really good to go out with the guys, you know. Just have fun. That's what it was for me tonight. Just have fun. You know, do your job, have fun. Um, and like Aguano said, uh, Coach Aguano said, just stack day by day. All we can do is just stack from this. So just put, uh, keep moving forward.
Corey, you're a veteran. Obviously, this is a tough stretch of games against these three teams, and I know you're taking one game at a time, but how do you kind of keep the spirits up and not get your teammates let get too discouraged with this game? Um, I don't think too it's like no discouragement at all. I mean, every day we come and ready to play. Um, and I think no, every game is an opportunity. I mean, anytime we play, it's an opportunity to prove yourself in front of people. So I mean, we come to work every day hard, attack the day. And I mean, sky's the limit for us, man. We just got to just keep taking it day by day and stacking days, like Ike said, and, and eventually it's going to come together for us. Uh, you guys seemed like you could get pressure first and second down and kind of quell this, the attack of Utah on those downs. But on third down, you really struggled to kind of get off the field, especially late in that first half. From the secondary perspective, what went wrong there? Um, ultimately, I think it was just execution. Um, I mean, we preach, we got to get off the field on third down, and we didn't do that today, and that came to bite us. Um, I mean, all we can do is learn from it and, shoot, tighten up our coverage and, shoot. But, I mean, at the end of the day, we just got to execute, get off the field on third down. What Was the RPO something you guys felt like you were prepared for? Yeah, I thought we were prepared for everything. I think we had a great week of practice. Coaches did a great job. Um, it's probably one of our best weeks of practice we've had in a, in a while, or at least since I've been here. So, I mean, ultimately, it's just execution. I don't know what else to say. How are you guys doing? Um, before we start, I'd like to make sure that uh, any fans out there that are still listening, I'd like to thank them. This has been a whirlwind week, um, you know, with the Sun Devil Walk and, and them coming to the stadium and all the uh, support that they've been giving me. I just want to thank them because uh, um, we'll get there. I, I promise you we'll get there. And uh, I just want to make sure we thank and, and you, the media. You guys have been uh, gracious to me. Um, and I appreciate that uh, wholeheartedly. And so before we start, uh, um, I just wanted to say thank you as well. Coach Michael Kertz, you know, Sideline Sports. Asking Nesta, I mean, it seemed like when they started to go up-tempo, defensively you're making adjustments, but what what issues, I guess, did their up-tempo start giving you into the second quarter and second half in general? You know, that up-tempo, it, it gets tough uh, because you're keeping uh, defensive linemen on the field without substitution. Um, and then uh, asking them to make plays over and over again. We, we got to understand that uh, uh, that is a pretty good football team. And tonight they're better than we were. And um, they're the defending champions, but there's no excuse. Um, our guys are getting better. Uh, I, I really think that uh, you guys don't see it, but I see it in the locker room. There's no point in the fingers. There was positiveness. Um, there was a fight to the end, and that's all I asked them to do. Um, so... What, what anybody else sees on the exterior, from the interior, we, is, we have grown as a team. And this is going to be a process. Um, I didn't think that uh, this will be four days and a miracle is going to hit. It's going to be a process. I got the kids' attention. Um, they're going to play, and we're going to get better and better. Um, but going back to your question, um, it is tough. They're, they're a good, uh, well-disciplined coach football team, and, and uh, um, they, their up-tempo gets us. Uh, they, I think they learned a little bit from – um, Eastern Michigan, what they did to us last year, we couldn't get guys off the field in substitution. And so we got to find a way to get stops. Sean, Chris Cartman, Sun Devil Source. Um, first half, uh, all third and longs with the five, I think, with the exception of a third and four where you had a penalty. So just what did you make about just the, the struggles and being behind the chain so much in that half? Yeah, we were definitely behind the chains. Uh, I, I thought we didn't take advantage of the, our first downs um, to give them um, a shot on, on maybe second and five or less where we were not uh, predictable. Uh, I thought that the defense, uh, Utah's defense, were, was able to pin their ears back and come at us. And that provides a lot of uh, um, heartache for us because then they are bringing four and five and six. Um, I did like Emery's poise in the pocket. Uh, again, there's a, there's a lot of duress and there's bullets flying at him. And then he couldn't get his feet set and couldn't make those throws um, that is something, Chris, we do have to work on because we played behind the chains all night. Um, and that's something that I'll address with our uh, offensive staff. How do we get better in that? And, and if we can get better in the next game, staying ahead of the chains, I think we'll be able to 
um, elongate uh, series and be able to be successful as well. And you sort of mentioned it, but um, two sacks, I think, right out of the gate and kind of struggled to give a clean pocket at times uh, for Emory. So how much of a factor was that protection? Um, I, I think it is uh, uh, something that we need to work on in the protection part of it. Um, it's tough that when those guys know that uh, it is a pass and third and 10 um, and they're just coming full go and they did a great job with a twist inside and we got to pass it off a little bit better. Um, and that's something that we need to work on, but it's always tough uh, for offensive linemen, especially when defensive guys are very athletic nowadays in that in that area. But uh, um, I promise, Chris, we'll get better in that area. Coach, obviously you're used to handling your four or five running backs. A lot of responsibilities come in with being the head coach, even if it's interim. Sure. What was this week like for you? It was it was an amazing week for me um, to be in charge of these kids uh, and for them to do everything that I've asked and, and then see them. The only thing that I asked was uh, just play hard and we'll see what happens. Um, when we got in at halftime, I brought them all in. Let's just win the half, no matter what the score is. And, and uh, um, there was no, again, there's no finger pointing. Um, I like the positiveness. We're going to grow from it. Um, I love these guys uh, with all my heart. And I told them at halftime, and then I told them at the game, there will be no quit from me, and there will be no quit from our staff, and we'll keep working. Whatever comes about, um, I'm, I'm happy and, and, and very honored to um, be a part of, of this staff and, and the head coach of these kids. Um, and, and we'll make sure that we take care of our business come next week. Sean, on a, on a similar note, you, you were out on the field early. Uh, yes. Could you just share a little bit about what, what goes through your mind when you're out there, the stadium's filling up, and you're getting ready to coach your first game as head coach? Uh, there's a lot that goes through my mind. Um, you know, I, I try to uh, go through situations that I might be in in the game. Uh, when I walk in the field, um, if it's fourth and one, do I go for it in this situation? So I go through situations in my field. Um, and then I look up in the uh, the crowd uh, with the billboards going on and, and the big screen. And um very blessed that I'm in this situation. Um, very blessed to be in the situation to make a difference with young kids. Um, and uh, if I can show the positivity and they can stay together, these two guys right here, and Isaiah has come a long, long way. But these two guys uh, can speak about what happens in that locker room. And um, it, it hasn't, and it hasn't wavered us at all. Coach, you guys have had a tough couple of weeks, both on and off the field. Just talk about how you guys keep the right mental approach going into these next two weeks against USC and Washington. It all starts with me. It all starts with me. And so that same intensity and positivity that I brought when I first uh, got the job that day, when I first talked to the team is the same positivity and energy I'm going to bring this week. Um, it'll start with me. Um, now our coaches feel like they didn't do a good job. Now I got to make sure I pick them up and then make sure our kids are picked up, uh, come watching our game. And, you know, we can all get into a room and criticize what we've done, but let's move on and let's learn from it. And, and let's be positive. We're still in the, we're still in the uh, game of, of helping young men too. And so um, it is a game of football. We all want to win. Um, but it is a process and, and it's going to take time. These kids have been through a lot. And so um, I'm going to make sure that uh, I'm the rock for them no matter what. Coach Greg Moore, Arizona yes, Greg. Public, good to see you. It's bittersweet, right? Like you get your first game under your belt, but didn't go the way you wanted. From a schematic standpoint, right, it's particularly offensively, are you looking to make adjustments to, you know, the way you guys run your offense, you're going to pass it more, you're going to change your formations. Is this reflective of the kind of offense that you like to run? I will go back tonight um, and I'll, I won't uh, go home. I'll go, I'll go back tonight or even at home and make, and look at it all over again. Um, if I don't make adjustments, shame on me um, and shame on me because these kids uh, uh, need to get the best of us as a coaching staff. So I'll make sure that I go back and make adjustments. Uh, what I think, uh, do I make drastic um, um, adjustments that these kids be, uh, come in confused playing against USC? That won't happen, but I will make little adjustments so we can get, so we can be successful. And that is the conversations me and coach Thomas. I have uh, all hoarded, uh, I make sure that I have confidence. He, he needs to know that I have confidence in him. 
and uh, and I do. And so, but uh, these little adjustments will be made. Yeah, you know, um, to me, those guys have been waiting in the wings and they've practiced really hard. Uh, it always hurts when the more experienced guy is not there. Um, I thought they grew as uh, players tonight. I thought Isaiah did a great job. Um, and now he's going to be there to give uh, uh, Ro a tough time. Uh, and I, I love that competition in the room. Whenever you're not with those um, starters, it makes it tough. But uh, I thought they played well. And then and, and, um, we'll just see what happens. But Ro was pretty close to going. Uh, but uh, his health is more important than, than, than uh, the football game. Appreciate it. Yep. All right. Emery Washington, 12 News. I know that this was quite the week for you guys, but can you just kind of take us through what this moment means given everything that you guys have overcome in the last seven days? Yeah, um, it was a tough week for us. You know, losing my head coach, you know, the one that we trust and then put in uh, a lot of hard work in throughout the weeks with him. And, um, I mean, it's a tough, it's a tough situation, but um, it's like we moved on pretty quickly from it and, and we and we practiced pretty hard this week. So I feel like we had a, um, a very great mindset throughout this week. I think a lot of people noticed or you said that there was a different energy in practice and on the field. Did you guys feel that? And how do you think that that translated in the performance? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's definitely um, a more energized practice. And um, we all felt it as a team. Um, we sped up the tempo of practice a little bit and we got a little more competition in. So um, I think that's great for us as a team. And, and I think, um, you know, we, we have eight games left. Um, I mean, everybody knows. Everything's not gonna change you know, in one game, you know. So um I feel like we just have to build off um the last week and keep being better. Emery, after the Tamarcus interception, uh, you guys had a chance going in, in closer to the red zone. You guys just sort of stalled out. How much of a factor throughout the game was just those chances going into their, their side but not being able to finish those? Wait, say that one more time. Just Please. with the, the big chances that you guys had going in onto their side, just how much of a factor was it? In terms of not being able to finish those drives, how do you grow from from that? Um, just execute, honestly. Um, when we get in those situations where our defense makes turnovers, we have to capitalize, and and we weren't able to do that. Um, that's something we have to get better at as an offense, and, and just dig into throughout the week. Devil's Digest. Um, just. Uh, Going forward for you, um, you know, last week you missed some throws that were, you know, a little bit high. This week, kind of the same thing. Just uh, going forward, just again, how, how do you get better at that? And, and are, are you confident you can make those plays going forward? Of course. Um, I'm confident in doing everything that my coach is asking me on the field. Uh, my my teammates are most confident in everything I can do on the field. And um, I mean, football is a hard game. You know, you get in situations where you have to move off platform and you know, um, you got guys right in your face. And, yeah, I mean, it happens sometimes. Hey, Emery, Colt Hoffman, the Devil's Digest. It seemed like you had a lot of manageable third down situations, which the team wasn't able to convert. Um, you know, why why was it so difficult to convert against this Utah defense in that scenario? Um, I feel like um, we just didn't really execute, honestly. Um, a couple of third downs were on me. I threw a couple of high balls on third downs and and we have to get off the field, and that's something that um, I might have to clean up, and 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 I'll do that for sure. Then those two interceptions seem like it was a, a opposite hash rope to Charles Hall that got picked, um, and then the the interception to Swinson was kind of behind him. What what did you see on those on those? Parts? First one, um, guy made a great play. Honestly, he was playing probably eight yards off. Um, um, he made a great play. He jumped it. I mean, they have great players on their team, too, and um, that's football. And the second one, um, I was kind of expecting my guy to do something a little different. But, um, I mean, they blitz 
they was in those um a cover zero and and blitzed all their guys and um I mean I had to get the ball off quick and I did that and it was a little behind us. It was just a little miscommunication on that um on our part. Joey Vodka and Perno Intel, that decision to go for it on fourth down and I think it was the third quarter when you guys were in field goal range to not convert there. Do you feel like that causes any sort of momentum change for the offense as a unit going forward? Um I mean, not really. I mean, we conf I mean, uh, we're confident in, in our ability to go out there and make plays and convert in any situation. So I don't think it's um, a momentum change that we um, are going to digress or anything like that. I think we're um, – we just have to keep getting better throughout the week and, and, and execute um, a lot better. Chris Carmen, Sunday was source. Um, uh, offense has run the ball well in the first few games, but tonight not so much, and that contributed to being behind the chains quite a bit. So what do you think were the factors that sort of contributed to that? Um, I think we came out trying to throw the ball a little more. And, um, I mean, I took some sacks. Um, I mean, we got to protect better. And, and like you said, we got behind the chains a little bit. Um, and, I mean, it's kind of tough to run the ball behind the sticks, you know what I mean? And um, I didn't play my best ball today. Um, that's something that I have to lock into um, this week and make sure that I uh, give my guys the best chance to win. I think that um, changes that, that Sean has implemented over the last week uh, has a lot of promise for what it will do for you guys collectively. Yeah, definitely. I think um, we definitely were a better team today than we were last week. Uh, we, I mean, we played with a lot of heart, a lot of fight. Um, I mean, like I said, we just got to execute. Better, I got to play better. Um, we just got to stay on top of everything that we do and, and just focus. And I mean, I mean, like I said earlier, um, the changes that were made, um, I mean, nothing would be changed in a game or in one week, you know. Um, but I, I do think the changes that Coach Aguano made um, would be, I mean, very good for our team for the rest of this season. I, I feel like we'll definitely improve uh, game by game. Emery, uh, coming out of the tunnel, I'm um, just everyone locked in arms like that. Uh, what kind of statement do you guys try to present when you were when doing like that? And just how was that moment like for you? I mean, it's just a family thing for us. Uh, we all locked arms, and we know we got each other back. We all in this together, and, and that's where we are. I mean, um, I mean, the head coach got fired this week. I mean, we look at each other, and I mean, that's all we have in this team. Um, so, I mean, we're just going to stick together for the rest of the season, offense and defense. Um, just keep trying to get better every single week. I mean, uh, we're in a good headspace. Um, I mean, obviously, we hate uh, losing, but I mean, we're going to I mean, come back tomorrow and attack the week and be ready to go for USC. Emory Scott Sanduli, House of Sparky. Uh, you face some serious pressure into the po in the pocket tonight from one of the nation's most ferocious defenses. Did that pressure wear you, you and the offense down as the game went on? Um, I wouldn't say it, it wore us down, but I would say, I mean, it was it, I mean, it's tough. I mean, we get put behind the sticks and sacks and and I kind of got a little antsy in the pocket at times and kind of um, started looking at the rush a little bit. Um, but that's something that, I mean, I have to get better at. Um, the offensive line has to protect better. Running backs have to protect better. But, I mean, we all in this together. I got those guys back. They have mine. And, um, I mean, like I said, we all in this together. Um, I mean, I talked to those guys after. And it just, like right now, just, I mean, just improving on, on what we have to improve on from this game and, I mean, get better for next week. That's it. Emery, it seemed like there was more of an effort to involve you in the rushing game in the second half. Was that a discussion that you had at halftime? Um, and, you know, what did it offer the offense? No, nah, I mean, I was just doing what um, the defense um, presented. Um, and shot the uh, uh, shot to the running back a little bit, and I got some pulls and got to get on the edge a little bit. Um, but, I mean, I mean, when I'm running and passing, I mean, I feel like we're a better offense. Thank you, Emory. All right, appreciate y'all. Mm -hmm.